Grace, mercy, and peace be to you all in the name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. This day, it's a great day. It's a great day. It's a great day to, to be alive. We celebrate this day because we are given on this day this great and wonderful blessing from our God that He came for us. There are a few things that are certain in our creation as His Son. The Son, each and every day of my life, has risen and has set. And it has done the rising in the morning, conveniently enough. And it has set at night. Now, sometimes this happens in shorter periods. Sometimes it's long. But the sun has not failed to do this. I've grown used to it. I think everybody in the time of Jesus had grown used to the sun. Doing what the sun was supposed to do. It was rising in the morning. Set at night. But here on this good day, this good Friday, it did. The sun rose, and in the middle of the day, the world turned dark. The whole of creation, the sun, the moon, the stars, all of creation bent to its creator. Closed his eyes. See, we are so used to light, we have so much artificial light. Oh, uh, we can't even, I, I, I'm not sure we can understand an artificial darkness. This darkness that happened that day. So Luke records it. He records that this, this is what's happened for three hours and the sky has gone dark. He records that the curtain, this, this giant curtain probably from here to the ceiling in the temple that would separate the holy place from the most holy place, and then once a year the high priest would enter into the most holy place from the holy place, and then he would make an, an offering. He would sprinkle blood, and they would call this day the Day of Atonement. The holy, the holy place here would have a, the, the, the bread from the ark, or would have the bread the, from the, the exodus, it would have some vessels that would be used, but here in the most holy place was actually the place that was reserved for the Ark of the Covenant. And here, in this place, was the place where God lived, where God dwelt, where everybody who knew anything about anything said, this is where God is, he's in the most holy place, and the only one who goes to see him is the high priest. Turn left, drive one mile. 
See, Luke is giving you directions, but he's not giving you directions that way. He's giving you directions like a person who would uh, tell you, you go on right up there, and there's a big target. And, and you turn the left, and, and you just keep going just a little bit. You'll see the greenhouse. And, and when you get to the greenhouse, turn right, and, 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 and you'll keep going. You'll see another house with a, with a big white fence around it. Stop there. Luke is giving you directions through pictures. Because on this Good Friday, on this day where it is wonderful for us to be alive, God wants you to see. God wants you to see. And see what He has done. You will be led to praise Him. That's what happens. Immediately after the first three verses, you have this verse, there's, there's a Roman centurion. And, and he's, he's standing there. His job had been to crucify Jesus. This is what he did. He obviously did it well. And he looks. And he, he, he looks upon what has happened. From the, the darkness to, to the tearing of the curtain to the cry of trust. He looks and he praised God, saying, surely this was a righteous man. A centurion. As Jesus' lips are closed in death, the centurion can't help saying, this wonder of wonders that he has seen. That God made a marvelous exchange. That for your life and for mine, that for the centurion's life, for the thieves' lives, for, for Caesar's life, for all life, God made a marvelous exchange. His righteousness for our sin. His cross as a place of praise. See, what happens when, when, when praise happens in the Bible is, is, is it goes like this. Jesus, as he's going around, as he's healing people, the thing that happens is that people have to say something. There's a widow in Maine, and, and, and her child died. And Jesus comes in and he brings the child back to life. She praises God at this wonder. You have lepers who are healed. And one of them comes back and, and, and praises God for what happened. Gives, lifts his voice. What happened when Jesus did wonders? What happens when, when there was the wonder of Jesus in, the, in, in a manger? Shepherds came and they saw what God had done. And they praised. They praised God. The cross of Jesus. The cross which makes this a good Friday for us. The cross which, which for us as sinful human beings we look at that we have the cross as a place of praise. And every time you look upon the cross, and then it's, it's all over, it's all over in this church, it's all over, we have that right. praise God. Because as a sinner, as somebody who has fallen, that's my place. Jesus is there for me. And throughout this life, you can point to my sin. Somebody can point to your own sin. But what Jesus is doing, saying, here, you can point to your Savior. High and lifted up, the God of the universe come down for us. 
So we join in praise. We join in praise. We, we take the directions that Luke gives us. We go into the darkness. It's there. We go through the curtain. We go upon the cross. We cry out, Father, into your hands. We commit our spirits. Father, we commit to you our praise. Father, we commit to you because you have been here for us, the righteous for the unrighteous, and God for sinners. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus, as surely as the sun rises, as surely as it will set, your love and your gift to your people will not fail. We ask, Lord, that we be people who celebrate this good time through the darkness into the curtain on the cross with you. That we celebrate you for us. Love.